In this video, I will give you a quick overview of what polygon modeling means and how this works in Blender. We have our outliner up here and when inside the 3D view, I go to add mesh and cube, you see there is a cube now and it says cube, but the cube is just only a name. I can double click and type in circle. I can go add mesh and make another cube. Go to move and move to somewhere else. And there you see now I have another cube. So these two are objects and inside is the geometry that looks for us like a cube. For every CAD program, it's just geometry. I could go add mesh and cylinder. Now I have a cylinder. Okay. For those who are familiar with Illustrator or InDesign and who are new to polygon modeling and this object and mesh might maybe sound a little bit confusing, but we can borrow from the Adobe package line. So for example, when we want to write text, we make a text box. And inside the text box, we put in the characters that form words sentences. And this is pretty much the same here. I have now three containers and each container has some geometry. Two container geometry looks like a cube and one container geometry looks like a cylinder. I can also make a copy. However, I will simply make another cylinder and move it to here. And with the shift uh, key when I hold it and then left mouse button click on this other cylinder. You see one is darker orange, one is brighter. This is my target. This is my originally selected. I can now go and say, so the, this cube, uh, sorry, this cylinder join to this cylinder container. So we go object join. And there you see, now we have only one object, but we see two meshes. Now, again, this is uh, explaining that what you see there are just uh, objects and then we also have the mesh that is inside an object, aka text frame with characters inside forming sentences. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how we can move and rotate something. Here in the toolbar, we also have rotate and scale. We can rotate it there when we go to the uh, property menu or we press N, there we see transform. Now we can click and slide or press five, enter zero, press enter. We can override the rotation or rotate it again. So everything what I do to the object will be captured. And you see here at five is the location, but there are two cylinders. Well, five relates to this orange dot. That is the object center or container center. Here's the container center and same there. In the introduction video, I talked about the transformation orientation that there are various uh, options here. Let me show you what this means. So I go move and I can move this one up and down. Easy. Let's go from local, uh, sorry, go from global to local. Pay attention to what happens to the Z axis. And you see how it's rotated. And when I rotate this more, there you see how this all updates. I hope that this basically explains the difference between global and local. Global is literally just the scene and local reflects if the object in some way was rotated. Very good. To delete something, we can press X and delete it. 
select this cube, press X and delete it. Very good. So select this cube, go object, make um, duplicate object. And then ooh, you can see how, oh, yeah, it can disappear. I moved my mouse out of the, um, the, out of the interface. So I will press escape. And then here is my object and I can move it to there. So let's do this one more time, X and delete. Select the cube, object, duplicate object. Now I move it very slowly. And when I press, for example, Y, you see it moves along the Y axis or X along the X axis or Z along the Z axis. I will press Y and move it to there. So when you make a copy, Blender instantly will jump into the move command. We can also uh, say control C and control V and then it simply actually pastes it into the location. So if you just want to make a copy, control C, control V is the best way. Or on the Mac, you can use command, control C, V, or on a Mac, you can also use control C and control V for copy paste. I will rotate this object one more time. Then select with shift and left mouse button, both objects, go to object and join. And there you see. They are joined. Let's go into edit mode. What do we see here? We see geometry of the two cubes. We have points and edges and faces. And you see also the toolbar is different. Now it's extrude, offset, bevel, and so forth. The menu here also changes based on what I'm in. So in edit mode, now I can manipulate the geometry. In object mode, I can manipulate the object. I have point, edge, and face select. What does this mean? Well, these dots are points or vertex. Edges are just these edges. And faces are, well, these faces. So when I have four points and they're connected by four edges, we can create a face that is inside. This face I can move. I can also select an edge and just move an edge. Or I can also just select a point and move that point. Okay, very good. When I with shift, select all these four points. You see, I select all the four edges and automatically also have the face selected. I can press X and say, delete vertex, edge and face too. If I delete vertices, well, since these four points are gone, all the connecting edges, all the connecting faces are gone. Let's press uh, undo, so Apple or Control Z, press X and say delete edges. There you see now the edges are gone, but the control points remain and the edges. Undo, X and face. No, just the face is gone. The edges remain, thus also the other faces. If I click with, uh, and hold Shift, and select all these four points. I can press F for fill and it's filled in. There's also all the commands here we have. I will try to use the main menu a lot so you see where I am. Blender, however, is very hotkey driven so I would write down all these hotkeys then actually the program is extremely fast to work in. We looked before at wireframe, shaded, etc. So let's go to wireframe. Then we go to box select, draw a box over it. 
So you see this is all selected. Go to shaded mode, click somewhere else, and then I draw a selection over it again. With the middle mouse button now I rotate my view. You see this point wasn't selected. So in any shaded mode you select what you only can see. When we're in wireframe mode we can select everything. Okay. The reason why I selected all this is now we can go to mesh and say separate the selection. And now I have a new object container again. So I moved this one out. This is kind of like how you join and dejoin geometry. When I leave um, object mode, see so now I can select these individual objects again. Interestingly, this has um, the object center point where this one had it because this got joined to here. We also have a context menu. So when I select this object, right click, set origin, I can move the center point to the geometrical center of this geometry. Left click, there it is. Okay, so um, maybe one little bit more modeling exercise. It's going to edit mode. We hold shift and then I click all these points. See, it's selected all to the face. I can go then to extrude. Extrude this one out a little bit, very nice. Then I go press X and say delete the face, very nice. I can also select this face, go to move and well, what's going on? It is not rotating. Well, this is because in object mode, this object shows no rotation. But when in edit mode, I switch to normal because I have this face selected. Look at that. There, I can do this now. Pretty cool. So you see, I'm extruding geometry out. I'm adding more to it. Now, Based on if you're familiar with this, this might all look very confusing and scary. Don't worry, all the exercises we will do are starting very, very simple. There is, I agree, a certain level of a learning curve at the beginning, but over time this will get much, much easier. It's just a lot to take in and then it will simply plateau really fast. So to bring this to an end, since we want to keep this video more at the introduction level, we go to object mode. And everything what we did so far was mesh modeling a little bit. We can go to modifiers. What are modifiers? Think about them as modeling interactive effects <laughs> or features. Now we'll take a look from here. So middle mouse button rotate, modifier, say subdivision surface. Oh, what happened? It is rounder. Add more subdivision levels, makes it nicer and smoother. Something at three is always fine. Okay, interesting. We can turn this off or on. You see how this is nice and round. The nice thing is when we go into edit mode, it is the original very low resolution polygon model. So you see that it makes actually modeling something organic super easy because I'm dealing with a very simple geometry. I can delete this or add this to it again. You see if this is just an effect. We can even add a thickness to it. My whole object is right now uh, five meters, four meters, so it's pretty big. Maybe let's say 10 centimeters for the thickness. So I type in 10 centimeters and now we gave this object a thickness. We can select this cube and say bevel 
add a bevel. When I zoom in, maybe 20 centimeters for the radius. Segments, instead of one, multiple segments, turning this into a fillet. And with one, it makes it a chamfer. So all this can be adjusted, the more, the nicer, but also the more complex. Very good. So this basically, I hope, gives a little bit of an understanding of the possibilities and the tools we will explore. A lot of the modeling is a very low resolution geometry. And then via these modifiers, we will then add more definition to our designs.